Watching Nigel Farage, the Brexit leader, the free thinker, the freedom fighter, the host of GB News. Call him whatever you want. He's just our mate. He joins us now in London. Lovely to see you, mate. What did you think today of these comments from one of the leading yes people about the no campaign? And as many people have taken it to mean, no voters. Well, I tell you what, I'm watching this with huge interest. Um, I'm loving it. In fact, I'm beginning to laugh my socks off because it strikes me this is Australia's Brexit moment. This is the moment that the big corporates like Qantas, the elites, the great and the good, finally get told, clearly and decisively by the rest of the country, no, we don't agree with you. So I think it's very exciting. And, um, and uh, hey, all the trends are in the right direction, so they can say what they like. None of it actually matters anymore. Um, it's going to be a joyous few weeks in Australia, I think. Now, you saw in the Brexit situation, again, where the corporates were, where most of the media were, where the elites were, yep. um, how often did it start to descend into uh, there was something fundamentally wrong with you, depending on which way you were going to fall with this? Well, it, it really, to be honest with you, um, it didn't happen until after the result. Um, it, was a very, you know, it was always seen to be a very tight result. Uh, the bookmakers favoured Remain. Leave one, and it was about a week after uh, the result that suddenly the establishment decided that anybody that had voted to leave was a knuckle dragging skinhead racist. Um, and <laughs> so it was really after the campaign that the abuse began. And do you know something? It still hasn't stopped today. Well, and as we saw, uh, and this is probably something we should talk about a bit closer and potentially after whatever the result is, yeah. but uh, people have long memories in institutions, especially ones that are embarrassed, and as we know, they came after you when it came to your finances, so this might be something that uh, some of the people on the wrong side of history, uh, whichever way you read it, might want to think twice about. Now, old mate Joe Biden, um, well, that was an... Uh, sorry, you, you go on that point, and then I'll ask you about Biden. No, I mean, look, you know... I, I would say to people, you know, don't be frightened by what the establishment might try to do for you, uh, to you. Stand up for what is right. And you can't atone for the sins of the past by making big mistakes today. And that's why, that's why no is the right vote. So, yeah, be brave. Stand up. Uh, and speaking of Brexit, can we just quickly touch on the BBC? Why is a whole bunch of people flying EU flags? Isn't there supposed to be occasions where the Union Jack would be more appropriate? What's this story? Yeah, I mean, look, the last night of the proms, it is a celebration of British music and British culture, uh, but we have this young, urban, university-educated bunch of fanatics, globalists, who don't believe in borders, don't believe in nation-states, and for them, the EU is the prototype for one world government, uh, and they're also pretty blooming rude, too, uh, in trying to hijack what is a great national event that's been going on for over a century. But you know what? They're so awful, we should simply ignore them. Fair enough. Alas, we cannot ignore President Joe Biden. Now, today uh, is the anniversary, or yesterday, I should say, uh, was the anniversary of the uh, horrible attacks on New York, Washington, and, of course, the plane that landed in Pennsylvania. Now, every single 9-11 since, there has been an appearance of the president in Washington, New York or Pennsylvania. Instead, Joe Biden was coming back from Vietnam where he gave that ridiculous press conference. I'll ask you about that in a second. Instead, his comments were made from Alaska where he was refuelling his jet. What did you think about that when they all know what the calendar is and they all know what's required on that day that he's doing it from a hangar in Alaska? Mainland America in modern times had never been attacked. Remember that Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, is thousands of miles away. And so, for Americans, 9-11 is rather like November the 11th is for us in London, or Anzac Day is for you in Australia. It is that act of national remembrance for that event, and for others, too, that have fallen in the service of their country. And for an American president not to attend, I thought was astonishing and in many ways, very deeply ignorant. I don't think this won't be noticed. And, and, and going back to just a few hours before, uh, yes, another cringe-makingly awful press conference where his own press officer had to cut him off mid-sentence. He then told the journos he was going off to bed. Uh, it's getting worse. He's deteriorating. And I will make this prediction, Paul. He will not 
be the Democrat candidate at the general election next year. There is no way, there is absolutely no way that the Democrat backers and funders and organisers can allow this man to stand again. They will find somebody else, uh, probably, probably in a few months' time. Yeah, about 12 months from now is when the Democratic Convention will actually take place. That's, of course, the final crowning moment. There's, uh, yep. They're going to rig the primary so that, basically, uh, nobody else is going to get a shot. So they have their moment till about this time next year to put the crown on somebody. Yep. The days, basically every day, yep, from, Super Tuesday, yeah, from Super Tuesday down, uh, Trump's going to be in the courtroom. Do you think that the timing of when they move away from Biden is directly linked to how... Trump's legal affairs look, say, by, you know, uh, April, May, June next year? I think, interestingly, we should focus perhaps for a second on the legal travails of Hunter Biden. Yeah, good point. The man who absolutely nothing stuck to him at all. Suddenly there is a special counsel. Suddenly it looks like there are prosecutions looming. Um, and the deep state can work on both sides of this. The deep state have decided that Biden could lose them the next election. That's why that process is moving. As for Trump, well, he's facing the most incredibly difficult time, uh, but he's resilient, and there are a very large number of Americans who can see that the politicisation of their judiciary is wrong, just plain wrong. So I have no doubt that whatever happens, Trump is going to be the Republican nominee. But it won't be Biden for the Democrats, and I'm really convinced of that now. Uh, I'm with you. Thank you very much, Nigel. We'll talk to you again very soon. Nigel Farage there Thank in you. the United Kingdom.